I am your president of law and order. In the 2020 presidential election, President Trump has doubled down on his core message from 2016, that he alone is the law and order candidate. But what exactly is he signaling to the American public? To campaign on the basis of law and order was to argue against people whose behavior was allegedly disruptive to existing social values, social norms, or or social institutions. This specific language has a deep history in American politics. But what can it teach us about today? Politics of law and order, almost from the beginning of the Republic, has been a politics of fear and a politics of resentment. Fear of change and resentment against those who are bringing about change. The law and order political strategy emerged in the early 1800s. In 1840, Samuel Ward King was the governor of Rhode Island. Poor people, disadvantaged people, immigrants to the United States at that time were not allowed to vote because voting was conditional upon owning property. Governor King formed the Law and Order Party to fight any legislation that tried to extend the right to vote beyond white male property holders. But Governor King clothed his intentions in a message of law and order. When people campaigned at the beginning of the 19th century on the basis of law and order, what they were really arguing was that they were opposed to social disorder of some kind. Law and order was used to defend the status quo, to defend the interests of people who wanted to keep things the way they were. In Prohibition, which emerged later in the 19th century and into the 20th century, law and order was used as a rhetoric by rural, predominantly Protestant interests to characterize the allegedly disorderly behavior of Catholic immigrants in American cities. Prohibition was partly a tool for rural Protestants to assert control, imposing a kind of order on the changing face of America by banning alcohol, which they considered a root of the problem. Francis Willard, who was one of the early leaders of the Prohibition movement, gave a speech in 1874 titled Everybody's War. In it, she uses the now common war metaphor to describe her fight against what she termed crime and disorder. She said, there is a war about this in America, a war of mothers and daughters, sisters and wives. Fast forward about 50 years to 1920. Future President Calvin Coolidge is the current governor of Massachusetts. But this time, the agents of social change are labor unions. The beginning of the 20th century was a period of real ferment around the conditions of American workers. And the formation of unions was seen to be a threat to the order of capitalism itself. There are threatened parties urging resistance to law in the name of freedom. Their works are evil. They know it. They must be resisted. Prosecution of the criminal and education of the ignorant are the remedy. Government must govern to obey his life. To disobey his death. Coolidge hoped this kind of language would help suppress the growing labor movement. In the short term, he was successful, but uh, really a decade, a decade and a half late, later, the right of unions to organize under the National Labor Relations Act was recognized. This is often the story of law and order. Law and order campaigns tend to emerge as the forces of the status quo are fighting what will turn out to be a losing battle against the forces of social change. In the 1960s, law and order rhetoric expanded beyond local politics and became a rallying cry of the National Republican Party. Barry Goldwater, who I would say is the first of the so-called modern law and order candidates, linked law and order with a criticism of the welfare state. Tonight, there is violence in our streets, the growing menace in our country tonight to personal safety, to life, to limb and property is the mounting concern or should be of every thoughtful citizen in the United States. Nothing prepares the way for tyranny more than the failure of public officials to keep the streets safe from bullies and marauders. What Goldwater was arguing was that there was a a kind of unraveling of the American uh, social fabric in 1968 
Richard Nixon and George Wallace, who was running as an independent candidate, both appealed to law and order in what seemed to be a covertly a racist ways. Um, law and order became a kind of racial code, just as it had been a hundred years ago, a, a kind of anti-immigrant code. For the president of the United States, you could walk on the streets in any section of Washington, D.C. at any time, and I would make that possible if I had to bring 30,000 troops to Washington and put one every 30 feet with a two-foot bayonet on the end of a rifle. We're going to make it safe for all the citizens of Washington, D.C., because it's a sad commentary that in the nation's capital, you are fearful of walking out of this uh, uh, hotel. The first civil right of every American is to be free from domestic violence, and that right must be guaranteed in this country. Time is running out for the merchants of crime and corruption in American society. The wave of crime is not going to be the wave of the future in the United States of America. In 1988, George H.W. Bush took the Republican Party's law and order appeal a step further against his opponent, Michael Dukakis. George H.W. Bush made visual the coded racial appeal of law and order rhetoric through the Willie Horton ads. He allowed first degree murderers to have weekend passes from prison. One was Willie Horton, who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Weekend prison passes, Dukakis on crime. Four years later, then-President Bush encountered a different sort of law and order challenge. Bill Clinton became the first modern Democrat who tried to make law and order work for him. This crime issue was used to divide Americans. I want to use it to unite Americans. I want to be tough on crime and good for civil rights. You can't have civil justice without order and safety. We can go forward together, and that's exactly what we're going to do. He was trying to make sure that no one could outflank him on the law and order issue. He overtly paired law and order with a pledge to advance uh, civil rights interests. While law and order appeals didn't disappear, this language became less prominent. That was until Donald Trump entered the 2016 presidential race. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. The fear of, of racial minorities, the fear of immigrant populations, the fear of the urban mass, that has been a, a consistent theme of law and order politics. The crime and violence that today afflicts our nation will soon, and I mean very soon, come to an end. President Trump is using law and order to try to mobilize fear, not just about crime and violence, but about a loss of what he calls the American way of life. The attacks on our police and the terrorism of our cities threaten our very way of life. So do law and order campaigns work? Electorally, typically yes, but over the long haul, not so much. Rhode Island extended the vote three years after the law and order party. Prohibition only lasted 13 years. Labor unions were legalized 15 years after Coolidge's speech and exploded in popularity and influence. And according to Professor Serrett, with the U.S. slated to become a majority-minority electorate, Nixon's racial appeals may be making their last stand with Donald Trump. Our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. When law and order campaigns emerge, it's often a sign that very soon significant social change uh, will occur. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.